On today's show, I've got a whole lot of Cura for you, so stay tuned. Hey, welcome back to the first layer. My name is this guy right here. That's me. My name is Richard Cleveland. I am your host here on the first layer three times a week. I'm so glad you're with me today because today we are talking about Cura 3.4.1. Uh, what I'm going to show you today on the computer is some of the basics of using Cura, the settings that I use when I'm preparing a model uh, for any printer really. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about acceleration and jerk as well. So let's jump over to the computer and we'll get right to it. All right, so we're over here at the computer and we're having a look at Cura 3.4.1, which is the latest iteration of Cura. And when you first start it up, you should see this screen. If you've installed it correctly, this is the screen that you should see. I'm not going to walk you through the, the, the installation of this software today because we've covered that in the past. But what I do want to do is I want to point out some of the differences and some of the things that you can do inside of Cura to get better print. So this is the screen, as I said, you're going to be uh, treated with. You'll see over here in the print settings, and we'll just cut to that now. Um, over here in the print setup, you can see that we are sitting at the recommended recommended print setup. This is the print with the recommended settings for the selected printer material and quality. Now, there's not much that you can do here. You can do build plate adhesion by turning that on. You can enable gradual uh, infill as well. Um, this will increase the amount of the infill towards the top of the model. Um, which is handy if you are actually going to be doing something that requires a nice smooth top surface. Let's quickly go over to the upper uh, menu system and we'll just talk about that really quickly. So here we have the menu system. We can see we have file, edit, view, settings, extensions, toolbox, preferences, and help. We also can do a prepare or monitor. Um, preparing the model is when you are preparing it, of course, for slicing and sending it to your SD card and getting it ready to go. So what I want to do here is first go under the file. You can see that we have new project, open file, open recent, save selection to file, save as, save project, reload all models, or F5, and quit. If we go over to edit, we have undo, redo, select all models, arrange all models, delete selected models, clear build plate, reset all model positions, reset all model transformations, group models, merge models, and ungroup models. You'll see some of those currently are grayed out because we don't have a model on the build plate. If we go into the view section, we can see we have solid view, x-ray view, layer view, camera position, uh, expand and collapse sidebar. So what we're gonna do here is we're just going to leave it at solid view for now. Uh, when we load in a model, we can, uh, we'll, I'll show you those different ones as well. Under settings, we have printer, extruder, profile, and configure setting visibility. We go under profile, we can see that we have two printers uh, loaded up in here. We have the Creality CR10 and the Prusa i3. We can also use this menu to add a printer or manage our printers. Uh, in the extruder, we can go ahead and uh, take a look at all the different materials that we have loaded. Um, we can select an active extruder. We only have one extruder on this particular machine. Uh, and then we have profiles. And this is going to show you um, how Cura has set up their profiles for individual printers. So we'll start at the top here. Extra fine, 0 0.06 millimeters. So that is 60 microns high for each layer. I want you to bear that in mind because we're going to talk about that a little bit later when we set up some of the other settings. Uh, if we go to fine, it is 0.1 millimeter. And that's what you're going to do for the most part on uh, your models. It does take a little longer to print your model on fine. It 
It also takes even longer to print it on extra fine. Low quality is 0.15 millimeters. Draft quality is 0.2 millimeters. Coarse is 0.4 millimeters and extra coarse is 0.6. Um, chances are you aren't gonna use coarse or extra coarse quality. That's just the way things go. Create profile from current settings and overrides. You can update your profile settings and overrides, discard current changes, and you can manage profiles from here as well. Uh, in the extensions, you're gonna see the change log. You can show the change log here. Uh, you can do some post-processing. And when I talked about doing um, temperature towers, and you guys have seen me do that a couple of times, when I've talked about doing temperature towers, you can see this is where you have to go is to modify the G code. And what they've done differently, and I'll just bring this up here, you can see that they now have post-processing plugins. So you can add a script, any one of these scripts you can add. And the one that we use quite often is change at Z um, 5.11. Uh, experimental. It is still experimental. I don't know why, but this is um, one of the things that they do. So we're going to close this and uh, we'll come back to that a little bit later. Uh, underneath the extensions as well, we have update checker. So this is where you can go and hit check for any updates that may be out there for Cura. Cura also has the ability to check every time that you start it up if there's a brand new update. In the toolbox, you can browse packages. And if we just open that up, we can see all of the plugins that are currently available in that, uh, in that setup. So these are all the plugins that you have. Your Z offset settings are in there as well. Uh, there's quite a few different things that you can go and check out. There's Blender integ integration now. So there's all kinds of great stuff in there. Do not, Play around in here just yet we're going to talk about some of these at a later date and we're going to show you how to use them properly all right so now we go under preferences we can configure kira from here and what i'm going to ask you to do straight straight up is go down to the settings tab and you'll see here that not everything is checked you'll see that it's got a, a black sort of square in it that means not everything is checked. And we can see right here, support roof line width is not checked. Uh, there's a few other in there. What you're gonna do is just click here to turn everything on. And we'll, I'll show you why I want you to do that a little bit later on. So we're gonna close this for now. And then at the very end, we have help. So you can go to show configuration folder, show online documentation. So if you wanna learn more about Cura, there is online documentation available for it. You can report a, report a bug and you can also see the about and the about just kind of looks like this. It just tells you who's worked on it, um, how it falls under the, the GPL licensing version three, um, end to end solution for fused film and 3D printing. So FF, uh, F printing. Um, and that's pretty much it in there. So. It's a good idea to every once in a while check and see what version you're using. So the latest Cura again looks very much like this um, when you get it out of the out of the box. Now we already have our Creality CR10 loaded, um, so that's the one we're going to use for today. Now we can check compatibility. You can click the material compatibility on Ultimaker.com. So what it'll do is it'll open up a website for you and you can go and check the compatibility of your printer with the software. Now down here at print setup, you can see that we've got uh, recommended and custom. Let's just uh, zoom in on that. You guys can see that even closer. So you have recommended and custom. Um, recommended is gonna give you very few options. This is sort of the easiest way to do it and you can set your your uh, uh, layer height right here uh, for whatever you want it to be at um, that you can also set your infill right now by default it's set at 20 percent again you can go to gradual infill you can generate supports and you can have build plate adhesion 
Uh, need help improving your prints? Read the Ultimaker Troubleshooting Guide, and it's right there. What we're going to do is we are going to click on the Custom tab. Now, this is where you can fine-tune your Cura. And as we get into this a little deeper, um, we're, today we're really going to focus on speed versus um, accuracy. And uh, we're also going to talk a little bit about jerk settings. So speed, acceleration, and jerk settings are what we're going to get into. So in order to access that, we have to click on the custom. You can see right away it opens up a whole list of things that we can now go into. And because back in the uh, toolbox, we enabled all of this stuff, we can now go in and see exactly what each one does. So first and foremost, let's just go to our normal draft quality. Uh, it's going to open up a page here just to kind of show you. Uh, you can discard or keep the changes. Just go ahead and keep those changes. You don't have to worry about them. Um, now we're going to go into quality. We're going to start there. And in quality, you're going to find all the usual suspects like layer height, initial layer height, line width, uh, wall line width, outer wall line width, inner walls uh, line width, top and bottom line width, uh, infill line width, skirt brim line width. Everything is right here. So what do I do? Um, when I'm setting this up, first thing I look at in my quality, if I'm doing draft quality, I want my first layer to be a little bit taller. So my initial first layer is going to be 150%, or I can change it right here at the initial layer height. And I can say, I want that to be 0.3. So now that is going to be my initial layer height is going to be 0 0.3. I can change it down here in the width. Um, and in the width, we know that we're using a 0 0.4 nozzle or whatever nozzle you're using. Most people are using a 0 0.4 nozzle. Uh, I like to make that a little bit fatter. That also helps me to get the best adhesion. So I'm going to change this to 105%. And that should be all that you need to do on that tab. So if you are printing at a layer height of 0.1, you're going to make your initial layer height 0.2. And if you, uh, and your initial layer width is always going to be 105%. This is going to give you a little bit of over extrusion. If you are printing, uh, something that is a movable part, like the little dinosaurs or something like that, you are going to want to take this initial layer width width down back down to 100 percent because with that little bit of over extrusion what happens is because you haven't printed it on a raft it does tend to lock up the part and we've tested it and it it uh it works good on a raft if you want to leave it that way just make sure you enable raft okay so now let's go to our shells and in this case our wall thickness is 0.8 now this is a multiple of what our uh, nozzle width is. So we are using a 0.4 nozzle. So 0.8 is two times the, or, or the nozzle um, size. So if you're using a 0.4, this is 0.8. So the wall count that it's giving us is two. Now, depending on the model, two is fine. I tend to like three, three walls. And now you'll see that it didn't change this number in wall thickness, but what it did do is it graded out. So now I can't change that. So outer wall wipe district distance is 0.2. And what that means quite simply is that it's the distance of travel uh, move inserted after the outer wall to hide the Z seam uh, better. And that Z seam is what is riding up the back of your print. Um, now our top surface layer, skin layer, this is the number of the top most skin layers. Usually only the top most layer is uh, sufficient to generate a higher quality top surface. So we're not gonna worry about that right now, but uh, our top and bottom thicknesses are set to 0.6. Now, if we remember, we go back, uh, into our quality, we know we are using a 
point, uh, we're using point two for our layer height. So this is a multiple of that number. Now two divided by six is three. So we are doing two times three to give us 0.6 or 0 0.2 times three to give us 0.6. So what this really means is that we have three top layers. And if you're unsure, that number is always right there on the top layers. Now you can go ahead and change that if you want to. You can change it to four and you can see it immediately grays out the top thickness layer. So we're going to go back to uh, three for now and leave that as it is. Uh, top layer, bottom layer, same idea. Top layer pattern. Now you can have it concentric. You can have it um, zigzag or you can have it line. I just typically leave it on concentric. Um, if I want a smoother line, then I will change it, but usually I don't, um, outer wall inset. We're going to leave that alone. Now let's just, uh, scroll down here just a little bit. We'll bring you into some of the lower stuff now. Um, let's start here with our optimized wall printing order. I don't usually check that. I leave it alone. Uh, outer Outer before inner walls, I usually leave that alone. And alternate extra wall, I leave that alone. I don't check them. I just leave them the way they are. You can compensate for wall overlaps. We want that checked. And again, this is all of the stuff that comes as a default. Now, fill gaps between walls everywhere. You want to fill in those gaps to give you the strongest model. Uh, filter out tiny gaps. Yes. Print thin walls, we don't want thin walls. Horizontal expansion, we're not going to worry about. And uh, Z seam, sharpest corner. We can have it random, smooth, or user specific. We're just going to leave it at sharpest corner. And the seam corner preference is to hide the seam. Okay, we'll leave that alone. We'll ignore, uh, or we will have uh, ignore small Z gaps uh, because that's not a a big deal. Enable ironing. Now what this does is once your top surface is finished printing, it stops extruding, but it takes the heat of the nozzle and it just sort of goes over the very top layer just to kind of smooth it out a little bit. And that's actually pretty good thing to use. So we're going to enable the ironing and we're only going to iron uh, the highest layer which is what we want. We're going to leave it on a zigzag pattern. Ironing line spacing is 0.1. Uh, and we're just going to leave all of that uh, as it is. All right. So let's close up that tab and move down into infills. Not very important at this stage because you can do whatever infill you want. There's several different infill patterns here. I tend to use a uh, grid more than anything else. You can go ahead and check infill lines. I don't want to really concentrate on infill right now. What I do want to go to is speed. Now, if we look at speed, I'm just going to bring that up so you can see most of what I'm looking at here. Um, if we look at uh, print speed, you'll notice that right now I have mine set to 40 millimeters per second. When this comes stock, it is set up to 60 millimeters per second. The reason I slow it down is so I get a much smoother and cleaner print. So I'm not going to worry too much about anything right here, but my travel speed, it's set to 120 millimeters per second. What that means is that that head is moving incredibly fast actually three times as fast as our print speed. I like to slow that down to 80. It makes the most sense. Our initial travel speed will be 40, and then it will help to take out some of those artifacts you might be getting. Now, if we go a little lower here, we can equalize the filament flow. And what this does is it prints thinner than normal lines faster so that the amount of material extruded per second remains the same. Thin pieces in your model might require lines 
printed with smaller line widths than provided in the settings. And this setting controls the speed change for such lines. So we're gonna, I'm gonna leave that checked because I like to have it. Now, you'll see two down here, enable acceleration control and enable jerk control. Two things that you can either play with or leave alone. If we open up the enable, um, we can see that what this does, let me just get back down there. We open up enable acceleration control. We can see our print acceleration is set to 500, which is perfectly fine. Our travel acceleration, however, is set to 5,000. We don't want it that high. We're just gonna lower that to 3,000, okay? And what that does is this is the acceleration with which travel moves are made. Affects initial layer travel acceleration, it's affected by print acceleration, spiralized outer contours as well. So our initial layer travel acceleration is 3000. So it's gonna, it's gonna move quite fast. Um, and our brim and skirt acceleration is set to 500. So if you don't want that enabled and you don't wanna mess around with it, just unclick it. Now let's go ahead and take a look at jerk settings. Now jerk settings, by default, if I do this, you can see what the default jerk settings are here, and they're quite high. Now your speed and acceleration are affected with your jerk settings. What I tend to do is set them low. If you set them too low, of course, it can, it can introduce other problems into your uh, print, but with the CR10 at five, it's very, very comfortable. Now our travel jerk is 30 millimeters per second and our initial layer travel jerk is 30 millimeters per second. I'm gonna bring that down to 20 and that's going to help the print. Now, if you don't wanna get into this, again, just leave it unchecked. If they are unchecked, these do not override the settings of your printer. Your printer has its own jerk values and its own acceleration values and its own speed values already in its firmware. By enabling these two, you now have fine tune control. But if you don't know what you're doing and you haven't studied acceleration, speed, and jerk settings, then you could be in for a world of trouble there and find yourself with it moving too fast, uh, making a lot of noise, rattling like crazy, uh, or just not having successful prints. So what we're gonna do is for the time being, let's leave these unchecked and then they won't, uh, they won't uh, do anything. So we'll close the speed. Let's go into travel here a little bit. And you can see we have uh, combing mode on all. We can turn it off and not in skin. Now, what the combing mode means, for those that uh, don't know, combing mode keeps the nozzle width already printed areas when traveling. This result is slightly longer travel moves, but reduces the need for retractions. If uh, combing is off, the material will retract and the nozzle moves in the straight line to the next point. It is also possible to avoid combing over top and bottom skin areas by combing within the infill only. So, and we can go ahead and say where we want it. If we want it on the infill only, off, not in skin. Okay. So avoid printed parts when traveling. What this does is it basically lifts up the head. The nozzle avoids already printed parts when traveling. This option is only available when combing is enabled, okay? So now let's move down, avoid supports when traveling. Yes, we definitely wanna avoid those supports because if you have tall, thin supports, this can knock, you can have them knocked over by the head hitting them. So we wanna avoid that. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna lift up a little bit and we want Z hop when retracted. What this literally does is it lifts the head by one millimeter and moves and hops basically to the next 
printing uh, part, which is really good. It doesn't knock over anything. So we've got cooling in here, which is pretty normal. Um, it's all the normal settings. You know what you want for cooling, 100%. If you want to lift the head, you can go ahead and do that. I don't want to spend too much time there. Supports. This is where things can get really, really tough. And I use Simplify 3D, as most of you know, on a regular basis. And in here, we have two options, touching build plate and everywhere, the same as we have in Simplify 3D. What is different is the way in which um, the infill is done. There's different patterns. We have lines, grid, triangle, concentric, concentric 3D, zigzag, and cross. Now, what all these mean, I haven't tested each one of them out, but I do know that if you go with um, lines, what it does, or grid, pardon me, what it does is it creates a lattice work of support, and it's very, very tough to get off your model. I always stick with zigzag and leave it just um, exactly where it is and with all of these settings. I really don't touch anything in here, so um, I pretty much leave that alone. Uh, down in build plate adhesion, this is where you're going to tell it whether you want a brim or a skirt or a wrap. Okay. A skirt is that line that it draws outside the model. A brim is that um, continual into a small piece. And a raft, of course, is just a raft of 3D printing. Uh, or you can have none. We're going to leave it at brim right now. Uh, we're going to load in a model here, and I'm going to show you uh, exactly how that looks. Mesh fixes we're not going to worry about right now. Special modes and experimental, we're going we're gonna to just breeze right over those. Let's load in a model. So I am going to go into uh, this area right here. Let's go back to our full screen again, and we'll cut to that. And we are going to load in our model. Let's see where our model went to. Let's load in that model. There we go. So we're going to go down to a drive that we know has models on it. I'm going to pull up something that needs support. So let me go into uh, let's see. Let's go into Oh, that's not the one I want. Let's go in here and we'll go into body on this one. Now this is the body of a stormtrooper. We can see that. We can also rotate around. That doesn't look like much at this stage. By holding down the right mouse button, you can rotate around and see the the model from different angles. So we can see where it needs support, um, and where it might be touching the build plate. Okay, we can see by the shadow down here exactly what space it's taking up on the build plate. So we're gonna zoom in here. I'm just going to move this up. If you hold down the scroll wheel, you can actually move the model up and down. Now let's go up here to the solid view for a moment. And we are going to actually change that to layer view. It's going to rebuild the model. You can see we have no support on this particular model whatsoever. Oh, that's because we're not showing our helpers. So let's go ahead and show our helpers. And there we go. So now we can see down here. Let me, I'll just zoom in and bring this up. That's rotating it. There we go. We can see here, there's that brim that we were talking about. Now, if we go back into our build plate adhesion, and we'll just uh, cut back to that, you can see here, 
we've got it set for brim. And that is exactly what's going on here. This is a brim. And the brim width is eight millimeters. It's using a brim count of 20 lines. So there's 20 lines down here making up this brim. What we're going to do is we're going to change this because this one doesn't really need a brim. I want to put this one on a raft. I'm going to show you what a raft looks like. I'm going to rebuild the model. We'll just give it a sec. And these are all your raft settings down below as well. You can see all of these different settings. So now this is the raft. It's going to create this raft. You can peel this away. Then it's going to start building its support structure. Now, if we pull this down, this is going to show us exactly what that support structure looks like. I'm just going to, you can see that we've got, let me just pull this down a little bit. There you go. So you can see here, we've got that zigzag. This is much easier to get off your model than say, um, using any of the other ones. This just kind of breaks away. So if we go down a little bit further, we can see how the model is building up from layer to layer. Uh, by layer eight, we can see that it is starting to build the lattice work and then it starts to build the model and it does our infill. Okay, let's go back to our full screen. So that is some of the difference. If we go back up and we decide to choose uh, instead of raft, we want to use a skirt. It's going to redo the model again. It's going to rebuild the model and slice it. And you can see it's building a four line skirt and then it's starting to do the um, support material and build the model. Why I like a brim on, on models like this is because there's no real easy way to print this, this particular model. And this support structure actually helps it uh, as the model is being built. So I really like that type of thing. But in this case, I would re personally, I would use a raft. It's a little bit more material. And at the, at the end of the day, it's a little bit more time to print. This piece is going to take seven hours, 22 minutes. And we will have a nice piece that we can just peel away. A lot of that support material should come with it. And you just toss it in the garbage. So that's our look at Cura 3.4.1 and how your jerk settings, acceleration, and speed can affect your model. We're going to take a deeper look at speed, acceleration, and jerk settings at a later date, but I did want to take you through this and show you some of the things that I do to get better models or better prints using Cura. Well, I hope you found that little walk through Cura informative today. Uh, I tried to show you as much as I could in the time that, that we had. Um, we, did, we are running a little long today, about 35, 40 minutes. But uh, that's okay, because if you have any questions about Cura on the Wednesday show, make sure that you ask them, uh, because we are going to have our, our regular long stream, uh, live stream show, pardon me, not long stream, but live stream show. And uh, we'll be here in studio uh, answering your questions on Wednesday, as we do every Wednesday during our live stream. Coming up on Friday, we've got another great show for you, but I'm not going to let you in on the secret. Uh, until then, listen, um, if you are a Patreon, uh, I just want to say that uh, there's been some things going on personally in my life um, and professionally that uh, I've had to kind of take a little break and I broke Dark Side by accident. He fell on the floor in the studio at home and both his legs broke off and uh, I have since reprinted him. I have since refilled all the seams got him back together. So I will be spraying him uh, tonight actually with primer and getting him ready so I can start recording more painting tutorials on the dark side model by talented artist Emilio Vitt. Uh, if you so choose and you'd like to be a part of this show, um, you can always, you know, get in touch with us in the address down in the description below. 
Uh, or if you'd like to be a supporter of the show, you can do so by going to patreon.com. Let's hope I got this one right. Let's see. I'm using a new switcher today. You can go to patreon.com slash the first layer and uh, sign up for one of our levels there. At the $5 and above level, you do get access to all of our videos uh, on painting tutorials and assembly and that kind of stuff when you're dealing with models. Um, so I look forward to seeing more people over there. Thank you to all of the Patreons that are, are there now, and thank you for your patience. I do really appreciate it. Hey, listen, if you just want to buy me a coffee, you can do that too by going over to buymeacoffee.com. And there's that little lower third, slash the first layer, buymeacoffee.com slash the first layer. And you can buy me a coffee because I enjoy coffee. Everybody knows that I like coffee. I also drink a lot of Monster as well, but they don't have a buy me a Monster button. So uh, I wish they would. Maybe we can change that. Maybe we can talk to them. Who knows? But uh, I'd also like to thank our great host uh, for the show that, that, or sponsor for the show that helps us with this studio and helps us to keep up and running excuse me and that is of course spool3d.ca print it right print it with spool3d.ca they've got everything you need from printers including wanhow creality any cubic and zortrax and recently they added the mama robot printers to their lineup and we'll be taking a look at one of those uh, in an upcoming episode as well so make sure that you print it right, print it with Spool 3D, because like I said, they've got printers, they've got filaments, and they've got all the parts you could possibly need. So check them out today at spool3d.ca, and print it right, print it with Spool 3D. Until next time, my friends, it's just me here today. So I'm trying to make sure I get everything here. I will see you guys next time uh, on Wednesday. So we'll see you Wednesday. Remember, the first layer is always your foundation to a great print. I don't know why I forgot that today, but let's, let's thank the, the right people.